Hello everybody, Correct Tune here, and in today's video we're gonna talk about how strong is Steven Universe, and just as a disclaimer, Steven by the end of the series is the strongest character in the series, so every feat in this video applies to him or he should be stronger than it, so stay tuned, you might find out how he's like universal or like massively faster than light or something, or maybe not. Or maybe, I don't know. This giant corrupted gem is defeated by Pearl, which it's a good fit because it establishes that at the bare minimum, the crystal gems individually can't beat creatures that are as big as a town or a city. Speaking of cities, the next fit is comparable with destroying a city because the next video is about Peridot escape pod which um, enters earth's atmosphere and creates an impact that produces 80 megatons of TNT and Pearl can still uh, throw her spear and pierce it and Garnet can literally crack it on her knee easily. This is impressive specifically because if you think about it the biggest nuclear explosion ever happened, the Tsar bomb, was only able to produce around 60 megatons of TNT. And this escape pod crashing and hitting Earth produced 80. And Garnet was easily able to crack that thing. Okay, so I tried to record this part so many times, I'm just gonna get straight to the point, okay? Basically, what's happening is that Pearl is piloting this spaceship at relativistic speeds, meaning around 30% of the speed of light. She pilots it and uh, she evades some meteorites or meteors, whatever you call them, and then she hits a bunch of ruby soldiers. Now, this ship moving at almost the speed of light produces, or better said, the ruby soldiers tanked around 217 megatons of TNT by uh, the fact that something moving at near the speed of light creates that much energy. This means that those rubies tanked an attack that's like, what? Uh, five times maybe even more um, stronger than the strongest nuclear bomb ever detonated and it's equivalent with destroying like a mountain and if you think i am exaggerating by any means i have to let you know that Garnet actually fought a corrupted gem once and just as a collateral damage she was able to collapse a mountain keep in mind she wasn't even trying to collapse that mountain. She did it while fighting another gem as collateral damage. You know, reinforcing the fact that crystal gems can destroy uh, mountains easily. Something to add to the consistency of mountain level is the fact that there's in a comic this one ancient gem ship that has this laser which can change the temperature on the thing it targets so much that sand, for example, turns into glass. And doing that at such a large scale requires at least 300 megatons of TNT in terms of energy. And keep in mind, this is an old one. This is an ancient, this is old gen uh, ship. Jasper's ship should at least on paper, be stronger and have more energy than it, and Steven is able to tank an attack from it with his shield, and Garnet throws Jasper into the core of the ship, the core of the energy of this ship, and it explodes, Jasper tanking point blank, what I could assume it's more energy than uh, 
300 megatons of TNT. And remember, 300 megatons of TNT, it's the conservative one. The one that uh, it's like on a higher end of this feat would be somewhere around being able to like destroy islands and countries. Whereas this one that I've shown is just uh, the equivalent of destroying mountains. So actually in episode, I think two of Steven Universe, like the second episode ever of Steven Universe, we see that there's the laser light cannons, which can shoot at this giant spaceship, right? It, they can shoot it down and basically explode it and completely destroy it. This has been calculated, given the size of the everything and the explosion. And anyway, the output of the laser light cannons being around four gigatons of TNT, meaning that this laser light cannon can like literally obliterate a mountain easily, right? And then we see that four of those, four of those cannons put together to attack um, Jasper's ship can't really do like really anything. If anything, Opal does more and Opal being a, a Amethyst and a Pearl Fusion, right? But then we see that Jasper is actually thrown into the uh, core of the spaceship and thanks to an explosion that can pierce through this fucking ship. And Steven can easily, easily in his uh, pink state, clap Jasper. Meaning that uh, Steven can clap someone who can take an attack stronger than 16 gigatons of TNT. Let that sink in. So this dude also, and I want to mention this because I don't know, just, just so people know about it, I guess. This one dude made this one calculation where basically when the diamonds came on earth with their ship and they start punching the ground, um, they produced a lot of energy because if you don't know the cluster could like sense it right like the like it reached the cluster who was like what 700 kilometers deep inside the earth meaning that those like the diamond ships could create earthquakes like on that level like that that deep did their punches have an effect right uh, and basically this guy calculated it to like it produced around like uh what 27 teratons of tnt which it's it's the equivalent of like destroying a country or whatever so i just wanted you people to know that that's another thing and obviously steven is stronger than the diamond mech so yeah just put that out there now this next fit it's way more impressive than any other fits we talked about so far like way more like leagues of like thousands of times stronger than anything we talked so far like thousands of, of if not i don't know millions or something you know basically lapis lazuli takes all of earth's oceans and water or at least like i don't know 90 percent of earth's water ever and she creates this giant water tower this feeds requires around 30 petatons of tnt in terms of energy that's insane that's the equivalent of like destroying like multiple continents like imagine if someone was able to destroy i don't know uh north america and like south america that's how crazy this feat is because i mean after all she did take all of earth's ocean so it's not that outlandish to think that this feat it's like at that level you know and not only that obviously Steven by the end of the series is way stronger than her but actually even in season one after she she talks to Steven and she gets convinced to stop doing this she actually drops the water tower and it basically falls on Steven and then Steven dies okay he doesn't okay he doesn't die but but this is interesting he actually tanks his bubble Thanks the ocean dropping on him. Of course, it's not the whole weight of the ocean, but it's at least a percentage of it, right? Given the fact that he was literally on the in the middle of the where the everything was dropping. So 
even in season one, Steven had th this incredible feat of like taking all of the ocean or like most of the ocean dropping on top of his uh, bubble, right? So th that that's pretty crazy if you think about it. And there's this one feat that I quite literally don't know how to quantify myself, so I, I don't know. But basically what happens is that um, the diamonds, as I mentioned earlier, try to awaken the cluster and the cluster basically gets from like 700 kilometers under the like surface of the earth to the surface of the earth in like seconds, right? Like this is impressive because like, okay, think about King Kong versus Godzilla, right? When Godzilla uses his uh, or hers, I don't know, a beam of, of radiation thing, like nuclear breath, whatever it's called, to uh, dig a hole through the earth up until it gets to hollow earth. That feat is impressive and it's it's like, I don't know, something around the lines of like it can destroy like islands and countries or whatever. And uh, that was in like three minutes. That, that took him three minutes. Cluster did it in like three seconds. So I think this feat is like exponentially stronger. And uh, the cluster also has the fact that it could create like large like uh, earthquakes throughout the whole planet. And this is impressive because like to create this like earthquakes throughout the planet it, it basically messing with like tectonic plates of the of the earth right and uh, especially when uh, the cluster does it from like 700 kilometers under the surface it, it's 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 crazy right so just that alone it's like the equivalent of like destroying like multiple continents i actually believe it was like something around the lines of like two or three uh, uh, tetatons of TNT, which is just insane, because this is like uh, approaching like close to like the level of like destroying the moon. It's like the clo it's like uh, in that range. If you like multiply this by ten or twenty or something, this amount of power, you get to being able to destroy like a moon or something, right? So this is this is pretty good. This is a pretty good fit for cluster, and uh, obviously S Steven, right? Steven, it's it's able to defeat the cluster, so uh, that's pretty impressive, if you ask me. Not to mention that the cluster's purpose is actually to just like escape like the core of the planet and get out of it, and then destroy the whole planet, right? That's that's, that's the purpose of the cluster, and Steven could still fight it. It's actually stated that the cluster is like planet level, and then it's stated that Steven is stronger than the, the, the cluster itself, meaning that you could probably argue that Steven is like planet level, but that, that's that's a little bit, I don't know, it, it's weird. You could, you could, but uh, it doesn't seem very, uh, it doesn't seem like it is the case. It just might be the case, because after all, Steven didn't fight a full-on cluster, Steven just fought a hand of cluster, you know? And obviously, Steven also defeated um, or fought against White Diamond and other diamonds. And White Diamond is the strongest gem. Um, she might even be stronger than the cluster, meaning that she might be even planet level. So, Steven is stronger than her, uh, at least in his pure pink gem form. And uh, th that's about it. Th this is all you th there is to Steven Universe. Uh, at his best, he's like multi continental to like planet level, maybe, right? So, th that's about it in terms of uh, attack potency, if you want. Are you ready? Go! When it comes to speed, I want to mention the fact that the laser light cannon, it's indeed called the laser light cannon, okay? And um, I know that's a bit of a nominal fallacy, but if it's something it's called 
laser light cannon. I'm just gonna assume that it's a cannon that shoots laser that are made of light. So I'm gonna assume it's light speed. I'm sorry. Okay, I know it's a bit of a fallacy, but uh, let's be honest. Okay. Now the second thing that's actually a feat it's actually Steven and the Crystal Gems um, react to lasers in this one scene like multiple times. They dodge lasers multiple times, um, and the thing is, you might say, well, how do you know those lasers are actual light speed? Maybe they're slower than light. Well, no, because we know that those are shot from prisms, which are specifically made to refract light. And also, they bounce off of Steven's shield, meaning that they can bounce off of surfaces, which means that it's, it's just light. It's actual light. Um, so, yeah, those are like light speed lasers and the, the crew are, are like dodging them. Another interesting thing is, if you remember earlier, I talked about Pearl piloting a ship at relativistic speeds. Well, that's relevant here too, because it, it kind of establishes that the Crystal Gems can pilot at relativistic speeds at a bare minimum, meaning that they have the cognition of dodging, for example, meteorites at relativistic speeds, meaning that they have like at least reaction speed um, at the level of like relativistic, right? So. Yeah, it's all consistent to them being like around the area of like dodging lasers and stuff, you know. Another thing to make it consistent is in the Light Trilogy, which is a series of three games, which uh, have roughly like like the same objective, which is to either defeat or save this prism. Uh, gem weapon thing whatever basically this gem can create uh, mini soldiers that are made of light and everything about it it's light based and actually there are attacks that it has that are literally light based and light speed and lasers and stuff which again it just to add to the consistency of everything if you remember earlier i was talking about this feat of the diamonds coming together and shooting a beam at the earth right if you look in the scene it's actually it's you can see that it's coming out of beyond like the moon like it's farther than the moon it's actually been calculated that this fit in terms of speed was around like uh four times the speed of light or something like that and this is this is impressive because steven can actually react to blue diamond and we have seen him do that and we have seen him actually when he's in his ping form to be able to react to white diamond easily meaning that steven at a bare minimum should be like uh, four times the speed of light easily or somewhere around the lines of like faster than light and we also see that smoky quartz which is a fusion of steven and amethyst has this one power when it gets emotional right that it can like run so fast that everything's uh, is in like slow motion which it's it's crazy because they are already those characters are already like light speed or close to light speed or faster than light and then they have this boost that makes them like so much faster even and if you ask why is this relevant to steven if this is a fusion thing well steven actually demonstrates this power later where he actually moves so fast all the crystal gems seem to be in like slow motion and think about the fact that like those crystal gems already can dodge lasers and and steven can move like i don't know 10 feet in a span of like the gems takes to like move to move one feet and you actually see this scene where he runs past jasper's uh dash thing where jasper's uh, like it's very uh fast and uh spins very fast like we see the same thing against garnet and garnet is like can uh barely dodge it right and uh it's very fast comparable to jasper's normal speed and steven can like uh, outspeed it easily and make it seem in slow motion and Steven can even use this power of speed we see in combat against like Jasper right so it's it's, it's pretty good it's, it's a pretty good ability and pretty good uh, I guess feat the fact that he can uh, make characters that move at light speed seem that they move in slow motion compared to him okay now that we talked about the main things Let's get into the more funky stuff, dude. Let's get into the more funky 
staff dude which um i kind of want to start it with the fact that that battle already has this promo trailer thing for steven universe um and they calculated the attack that the diamonds do you know the the one with like when they all come together and they attack earth at the same time they calculated that to be around uh i don't remember damn but it was around basically around the area of like they can destroy like stars or like solar systems like yeah that's how crazy it was um it surprised me too so probably gonna say steven it's like maybe star level or something um another thing that can be used to support that is the fact that rose's dimension has a star in it meaning that if you believe rose created this dimension right you can argue that she created also a star and kind of how it works is that the possibility of a dimension that's entirely pink ex to exist outside of rose quartz and she only created the gateway to it it's very unlikely it it's way more plausible that she created it um and especially since we see that other gems can create pocket dimensions and stuff so if you want to use this feat i guess you can say look dude she can create like a, a freaking uh, a star or something or a solar system and there's also the fact that steve universe crossed over with brawlhalla and i already made a video on brawlhalla with Ketty on his channel where basically we established that brawlhalla characters are anywhere from like planet level to like star level so like yeah this is uh, obviously this would be a composite version of steven with him just being in brahala being uh, like uh, close to the other characters from brahala but still if you think like cross like um what i mean by that is that if you want to say that like uh composite steven it's this strong like i wouldn't put it uh, uh you know beside you to do it um another thing is steven tanked attack from uncle grandpa uncle grandpa for people who don't know it's a universal level being he can literally uh, manipulate reality in the universe itself and he can uh do a lot of stuff with the universe i, I don't I, I don't even want to talk about it but basically what i'm saying is that he's he's universe level right without getting into the nitty-gritty of it and he is actually afraid that the crystal gems might beat his ass which like you can argue like damn dude this guy is like universe level and the Steve and the crystal gems can like beat him or whatever that's kind of fucked up dude another thing with the universal is the fact that steven at one point had this gem artifact that could create and destroy multiple timelines meaning that steven for a brief second was low multiversal meaning he can more or multi-universal he could create and destroy multiple timelines with this uh thing and obviously this is season one and it doesn't really line up with the rest of the powers and i don't know it doesn't really make sense if you think about it with the rest of the show but yeah at least with this thing you can argue he can like time travel and change timelines and whatever and can even destroy timelines so like yeah i guess the last thing i want to talk about is crossover nexus which basically puts garnet uh, into a situation where she has to fight strike and strike is this one villain who can beat Finn the human or Jake the dog actually. He can beat Jake the dog and can beat like Raven from Nintendo's Go. And those characters are like universe level. Meaning that Garnet being able to like fight him or like somewhat be comparable to him makes her like universe level or something. You know, that it's absurd. But uh, you know, that's kind of the point of this part of the video to, to get the most absurd levels of wank you can give to Steven Universe to... You know a combination of non-canon feats and just outlandish things that uh or outlandish arguments or whatever so yeah this is it this was how strong is steven universe i hope you you got something new from it and some new arguments some new scaling some new whatever uh thank you for watching the video and see you next time goodbye I accidentally created an
alternate timeline. A thing that I actually forgot to mention, and sorry for background, um, for the background noises, but Lapis is actually able to travel to other galaxies or out of the Milky Way in a sp relatively short span of time. And last time I made a calculation about it, it turned out that Lapis is like millions of times faster than the speed of light, or at least her flight is. Um, meaning that if you want to say that Steven is comparable or can react to her flight speed, which he has reacted to her flight, you can argue that, uh, that yeah, he is like, like massively faster than the speed of light or something. Steven and the crystal gems, come on now don't be shy. Steven and the Stevens, come on now don't be shy. I learned to stay true to myself by watching myself die.